Welcome to Systems Alliance. My name is Jexy, and in this video, we're going to go ahead and go over this weekend's box office where Avengers Endgame continues to decimate all other movies and is approaching some crazy records. Could it be the biggest movie of all time? So last week, as many of you know, Avengers Endgame had the biggest opening in cinema history and it wasn't even close. People were thinking, well, one, is it going to break the 257 million current record held by Infinity War? Could it even break 300? Well, it broke 350 million because it finished with 357 million domestic and it opened worldwide to a massive 1.2 billion dollars a number that people didn't think was even possible but yet that's exactly what happened it shattered pretty much every single record that there was to shatter it had the biggest thursday the biggest friday the biggest saturday the biggest sunday it had the biggest international gross had the biggest domestic gross had the largest worldwide gross ever and i know you would think well of course if it has those two it would make sense but it all has to do like was China package as part of the initial release? Was it not? You know, other movies released bigger, but this one, I mean, it released everywhere and it released big everywhere. It also had the largest percentage of movie share. So 90% of people who saw a movie opening weekend saw Avengers Endgame. Nothing's come even close. And really when you think about it, that's pretty crazy. What's also crazy is that last week, number two, finishing number two, just to show you what a big bump Avengers Endgame gives a movie, Captain Marvel went all the way back up to number two, only fell 10%, whereas all the other movies fell a ton. You, you gotta see Endgame. Oh, you haven't seen Captain Marvel yet? Well, now you gotta go see this so it can lead to Endgame. It's just been a crazy ride for Marvel. So then the question began, wow, this opening is crazy. What is its second weekend drop going to look like? Is it gonna be a massive drop because it was such a massive opening? Is it gonna hold on really strong? and? If so, what's the definition of really strong for a movie that opens up with 357 million? I mean, what kind of second weekend could there possibly be? You know, is it going to be a, a record breaker like an Avatar drop or a Titanic drop where it's just minuscule? That seemed a little unlikely, of course. Or is it just going to be a regular superhero drop, but because they're starting so high, you still get an insane number? Well, it turns out it did drop 58.7% and that left it with around $147.4 million for the weekend. And this is its second weekend, $147 million. And that's your second weekend dropping 58%. That's pretty amazing. Now that is just shy of the 149 million that Star Wars The Force Awakens dipped to in its second weekend. Now, globally, Avengers is a much bigger property than Star Wars. So it's not gonna have to worry about The Force Awakens. In fact, it's already passed it globally at the box office in just two weekends. It's already just shy, Avengers is, just shy of 2.2 billion. And even adjusted for inflation, The Force Awakens is not quite at that level. So it's not a real comparison worldwide, but domestic, if The Force Awakens is already, I guess, trending a little bit better, does that mean Endgame won't catch it? Personally, I don't think that means that at all. And the reason is because it opened with over a hundred million more in its opening weekend than Star Wars did. So even if it falls behind the pace of Star Wars, it doesn't even matter because that pace, I don't think can catch up a hundred million. So what I'm thinking here is that Avengers Endgame will be the first movie ever when you do not adjust for inflation. So that's a, that's a big portion right there that will finish with $1 billion domestically. Now, of course, once you adjust for inflation, there's a bunch of movies that have hit that mark, but still an amazing accomplishment for this movie. Avengers Endgame now stands at a little over $621 million domestically. So when you're trying to catch a billion and through two weekends, you're at 621, it looks like a pretty good possibility. Overseas, Avengers Endgame brought in over $285 million and that total now stands at over $1.58 billion so a massive total internationally as well as i mentioned avengers endgame is just shy of that 2.2 billion dollar mark whereas avatar finished with over 2.7 billion but you have to factor inflation to be fair so avatar is actually over three billion dollars but does that mean avengers endgame can can't catch it no i don't think that means that at all because i think it will catch it and i think it'll catch it 
pretty fast as well. At the rate it's going internationally and domestic, I think it's easily going to pass Avatar for that three billion mark. Now the real question is, what other movies will it pass on the way there? So some notable movies that it will end up passing, probably this week coming up, once you factor in for inflation, this is worldwide, the first one's going to be E.T. So E.T. is Spielberg's top film ever, and that's at around 2.3 billion. So since it's already just shy of 2.2, at some point this week it'll probably pass that. Well, now you might be thinking, okay, so it's obviously already passed Star Wars The Force Awakens, well, what about the biggest Star Wars movie? And The Force Awakens, once you factor in for inflation, is actually number two on the Star Wars list. And, of course, it's behind the original Star Wars. Retitled, of course, A New Hope. So, where does that movie rank? Well, Star Wars A New Hope, once you factor in for inflation, is around $2.7 billion. So, it might take another weekend or so to catch up to Star Wars, but obviously it'll make it. Then, of course, as I mentioned, Avatar's sitting there at $3 billion, but... There seems to be a movie that, you know, keeps getting brought up that Avengers may have passed, but not quite really once you factor in for inflation, and that is Titanic. Now, Titanic sits at over $4.1 billion. So think about how big Avengers Endgame is. And yes, it is by far the biggest opening, but as we all know, movies are super front-loaded nowadays. But as big as it is, it still may not actually pass Titanic at 4.1 billion. Now, personally, I don't know. It's really up for grabs. I, I cannot predict that. Uh, 4 billion is such an insane number. I mean, it's been hit once. Maybe if you factor in for inflation, there's, you know, does Gone with the Wind really fit there? Ah, I'm not so sure. I think it actually finishes just a bit shy around that 3.8 billion. But there's all these old movies that were in theaters for like decades. It's really hard to compare them. But as far as any blockbuster that's been like the big movie titanic is it there's really nothing that stands up to it in any sort of modern times and like i said 4.1 billion dollars for titanic so let me know what you think can avengers endgame catch titanic i think it's a foregone conclusion already at 2.2 billion it's going to catch pretty much everything else but titanic i think that's really the thing that avengers endgame is shooting for at this point because it's pretty much decimating every single other record. And for those wondering, as I mentioned, Avengers Endgame, of course, 621 million domestically, 575 million from China. So China is playing a huge part in this. And when you put those two together, I mean, you already have over a billion dollars with just two countries. So that's pretty crazy. But like I said, Avengers Endgame, breaking all the records. And for those curious, Avengers Endgame did cost $356 million to make, so one of the most expensive movies ever, but at the same time, when you're already going to make a minimum of $3 billion, who cares? Now coming in at number two this weekend, which almost seems like, why are we even talking about it? But hey, we still got to go through the one through five. So coming in at number two this weekend with $10.8 million and costing only $8 million is The Intruder. So this is its opening weekend. Obviously, if you only cost $8 million, 10 point eight, that's pretty good. I expect a movie that cost eight and it's already made 10.8 in its opening weekend, I expect that to make money. Another new release this weekend, finishing at number three, is Long Shot. And that finished with $9.7 million domestically and $3.2 million internationally. So its total is $12.9 million for its opening weekend. So $12.9 million sounds good, especially when you compare it to The Intruder, which I just mentioned. Uh, it's actually not so good because unlike The Intruder, which only cost $8 million, Longshot costs somewhere between $38 and $40 million. So I personally think this is going to be a money loser for the studio. And unfortunate for Seth Rogen and company, but they would have to make over $80 million just to make their uh, money back uh, once you factor in marketing costs and everything like that. Probably need to be somewhere in the range of 100 million just to break even. So if your total opening is just 12 million, it's probably not gonna happen. I guess you could say it's a long shot that this movie makes money. Hmm, that was a bad pun. And speaking of losing money, coming in in fourth place this weekend is the new release, Ugly Dolls. Now, at first when I saw the poster, I thought, man, I remember when these Ugly Dolls were out, you could buy them and everything, and now they're having their own movie? I wish I had created that. I'd, I'd make a billion dollars. Now. Who knows what uh, the owner of Ugly Dolls got paid for this, but only opening with $8 million, unfortunately the movie cost 
45 to up towards of 53 million dollars. So there's almost no way this movie is going to make money. I mean, it opened with even less than Seth Rogen's and cost even more. Now, it is for kids. It didn't open internationally yet. So maybe we could see a bump. Maybe, maybe it catches on in some country that really helps it out, but it's not gonna be America. And that's the one it really needed. So this unfortunately also looks like a flop. And coming in at number five, still hanging in there and obviously getting a boost overall, especially last week from Avengers Endgame is Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel falls 48.5% to finish with just under 4.3 million, and it brought in 1.2 million from overseas as well. Globally, Captain Marvel stands at 1.12 billion, which when you think about it, looking at the movies surrounding the other Avengers movies that have come out recently, they also had some pretty big totals. Captain Marvel, I think, while it has died internationally, it keeps on trucking domestically so it's at 420 now maybe it finishes with 440 million i don't think it'll get too many more from foreign but it will break the 700 million mark from overseas markets so a huge hit obviously disney is just killing it right now they're just making all the money in the world but there's your top five for this weekend let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below what do you think about avengers endgame where do you think it's gonna hit is it gonna hit three billion i think so will it hit 4 billion, and then can it beat Titanic once adjusted for inflation? I think that's, at this point, the real question at hand, and how, how is it gonna hold up? Uh, obviously, the big drop should have come this weekend, and it was a big drop, but it was also the biggest movie of all time, so it wasn't a crazy drop, and still the second biggest second weekend of all time, so how's it gonna flow now that pretty much everyone has seen it? Is it going to get a lot of more repeat viewings. I know people have seen it already a dozen times. Are you one of those people? Let me know down in the comment section below. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, hit me up on Twitter, and we'll catch you next time.